Hey everyone, welcome to the uh, Fin Factor the pre-shoot live for episode number 65. Yeah. Yeah, that, that rhymes. Nice. Not bad, Good huh? work. How about that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, guys, welcome. Thank you. We've got Super Key Grip Joe uh, in the garage house, whatever you want to call it tonight. Uh, he's helping us out. He's got the laptop out, taking the comments and the questions, which we will pretend that we know the answers to and uh, throw <laughs> those back to you. So if you guys do have any comments or questions, feel please feel free to uh, throw those in right about now. Uh, so how did we, we do? We had uh, three games this week, right? Um, pretty two, solid. Two wins and a tie. Okay. I hate shootouts. <laughs> I hate shootouts. Two wins so and a tie. It's, it's NHL 500 now that, that we're at. Yeah? No. That this week was great, but right yes. now it's NHL 500. We're 10, 10, and 1. It's yeah, so 500, is that, yeah. Is that under 500 because the 1? No, uh, we're points percentage. Okay. That's that's what NHL 500 means. So Got it. Yeah, Got good it. to go. Cool. We're there. Yay, let's celebrate. Yay. <laughs> I know. See, that's the thing. <laughs> and he was just showing me the standings beforehand. See, he's like, yeah, see, we know Calgary's done a little bit, and Vegas is right there because Vegas got a win, so they're technically ahead of us now. I'm like, cool, call me in a couple months because standings in November, who cares, right? Well, but, I, yeah. My point wasn't that, hey, the Sharks are so good. It's more of uh, they're all right there. Yeah. Like nothing had happened. That that month of October did not happen. Yeah. So Got erased. Yeah. Market correction. They, yeah, I like that. I like to call it. I like that. So anyway, yeah, uh, again, uh, go ahead and filter in all your uh, comments and questions, and we'll get to those. Joe, do we have any right now? Or are we? Well, you've got a first, second, a third, and I can't read oh. the other one. Not because it's... Bad. I just I think it's in a different language. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations on being first, second, and third. But we were here before you, so sorry. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, the let's see which one was the first Edmonton game. Um, Connor McDavid with a goal, a goal I believe. But he it was, was kind of garbage time in a way. I mean, they shut down him and Drysaitel. Yeah, McDavid was owning the Sharks on ice time. Oh, time on ice. For those of you who don't get that, yeah, ESPN had uh, when Edmonton played last San Jose year. last season, right? Last year, um, Edmonton actually lost against the sh uh, Sharks, and they ran the headline: "McDavid dominates Sharks with two goals." And it's like, but they lost like six. They to lost. Three, I thought, six to two I thought like Couture had two goals in the game as well. So uh, yes, like, he did. They lost, and someone else had scored two goals. So why would they? Whatever. Because of the name of Connor McDavid right. and them trying to clickbait, yeah. So, all right, I got a anyway. Deuces shoeless here. Ooh. Do you think the Sharks should have gotten Piri, P I R R I, yeah, off waivers? He's far uh, ahead and over. He's far and ahead on upgrade. Oh, no. hi, hi. Um, <clears throat> he's far, he's far and ahead upgrade, upgrade over Radiel. Over, yes, thank you. Uh, Radiel is in right now. I think because of injuries, not so much because Radiel's a good player or the coach <laughs> really likes him. <laughs> You know what I mean? But the thing is, like, with waivers, when you claim somebody off of waivers, you have to have them in your lineup for 30 days without dropping them or scratching them. I don't know about scratching. Maybe you could scratch them, but uh, you can't drop them to the minors. Yeah. They have to basically be playing in your lineup, and if you don't, then they go right back to the team that they came from. So part of it is you don't, unless the guy's really good and you're going to want him in your lineup all the time, and you're replacing Radil, who got how many minutes? Eight minutes? Like... And you're going to be paying so much money for it. Not that it's a lot of money, but the Sharks are really tight on cap space. So um, I just don't think that they would have... It would have made sense to do the move, obviously. And they didn't. I don't think he brings so much that the Sharks are going to be in such a better position. I think, yeah, maybe he's a better player than Rodil is. But there's a lot of players we could say that about right now. Um, I think even the replacement players that we have coming in that, that Rodil gets scratched for have been better players. I think Noah Gregor has been a better player. But he was able to move back down with the Barracuda. I think they played uh, right. last night, or maybe it was tonight. It was last night. And um, the other thing is they has to learn the system. Yeah. You're starting from scratch right. with a guy where you can call up a guy from the minors who would be just as good as a replacement than Peary would be. He already knows the system, which is Radil's problem. He doesn't know where to go. <laughs> so um, it, it would be it would be a scratch. Like It would it It'd would be a be wash. Get, yeah, a wash, yeah. sorry. So, no, I don't think... Waiver system... It's funny, like going into the season, everyone's like, "Oh, it's the year of the uh, free agent or restricted free agency, where everyone's going to do offer sheets." Yeah, it's the year of the offer sheet. How many offer sheets were there this summer? One. I think there so. maybe two. Yeah, and they got matched right away. So it's just, it's silly. It's talking heads. So I don't see. We don't. You don't really see a lot of waiver claims mm -hmm. on players. Okay. 
No, that's fair. I think, I mean, it'd be cool to have him on the team, but I think it'd be cool to have him from the start of the season. Um, yeah, for, for me, I, I don't think he brings so much to the team that it's, uh, you know, it's a make or break kind of thing. The Sharks aren't going to the playoffs because of him. So, right. Um, and they're not, probably not going to be winning that much more games because of him. So uh, I, I'm okay with it. It's not a big deal. And, um, you know, he passes through. There's a bunch of other teams that pass on him too, and I think that speaks volumes as well. So go ahead. All right, Sarah V wants to know, what do you guys think of the Sharks' performance over the last couple of games? What do you think changed from the previous games? <laughs> they're terrible. Well, I don't think they played great against Detroit. I think they got lucky to escape with the um, shootout win, okay. I guess, if you will. I think that was a game they probably deserved to lose. Martin Jones kind of stepped up big at the end, uh, and especially once again in the shootout, which is amazing. I really think he worked hard yeah. this summer on breakaways and maybe not so much shootouts, but actual breakaways yeah. in the game, which is a little bit different than shootouts. Yeah, because during that three-on-three, three, he basically had... I mean, I believe he got beat, but he took away the portion the guy wanted and he shot wide. Yeah. But, I mean, the Sharks also during that overtime, they, they fought off a really, really good power play at a four-on-three, and yeah, Jones came up big a couple times, but mm -hmm. again, that PK is just so strong. Yeah. So far. No, I agree with you on that one. The PK has been phenomenal. I think um, you, you've seen a little bit more emphasis on playing strong in front of him, in front of Jones. Yeah. Um, and you've also seen Jones kind of have those flashes where he's brilliant, right? We've seen in like the previous season where you know, they would have a breakdown, the puck comes the other way, and Jones just wasn't, you know, top of his game, and the puck goes in. Uh, I think lately we've been seeing that even when they do have a defensive breakdown, that Jones is sliding across, making this spectacular save. So those uh, those chances are being limited. They're a little bit fewer and farther between than last season, I believe. It could be wrong because the stats might, might say otherwise. But it, from watching the games, and uh, it just it feels that way at least. So uh, I don't think he's getting hung out to dry nearly as much as last season, but it is still happening. It seems like he's coming up with the big save a little bit more often mm -hmm. than last season, though. That third goal on the from the Red Wings yet la uh, last night, mm -hmm. he he kind of got hung out because there were oh. four or five people or sharks, and they all went to the shooter, like yeah. every single one of them. It was like, yeah, nobody. <laughs> Yeah, it was that the one where he they passed it right in the slot. He one, was all by himself, yeah, right? Yeah, one time. Yeah. yeah, and he still he still no, almost came across. Oh, the one timer. Nothing to see. Okay. The one timer. Yeah, that one. That yeah. There was the one where uh, that was the second goal. Who was it? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember who it was. It wasn't Athan Athanas either. So the Burns no, just kind of like tri like kind of like he, he Burns left was the not front paying attention at all. He was looking <laughs> the, the wrong direction. He just yeah, and, it's and just then miscommunication. Yeah, he, he he they get it right into the slot there, and it's like you can't. I don't care what goaltender you are. That's not an expected save. You can't expect a goaltender uh, to make that save. If you expect the goalie to make that to save, it, no. But, but wait, if you expect the goalie to make that save, w what's supposed to go in? Jimmy Howard right? made that save. That's great. Yeah. I wouldn't expect. No, I know. Two minutes left in the game. Yeah, the exact same play. The Sharks got it right in the slot. Lo I think it was Couture. He went right, on yeah. glove side up high. Exact same spot. But if you watch, Jimmy Howard anticipated yeah. it. Yeah, a little bit different. He wasn't reacting. He kind of was okay. He's probably gonna go glove. Mm -hmm. He was cheating. Side. Right. He cheated. He right before he shot it, he was already moving his glove hand up right into that spot. Yeah. Almost like he probably like gave it to him and then moved to take it away, expecting him to shoot there. Not that it, you know, Couture should. But you know make what? that shot, but Jimmy Howard lost the game. But, but at least I'm glad Coach sure at least got it on goal rather yeah. than missing the net in front. But. See, and the thing is, people hear that and they think, well, then Jones doesn't know how to anticipate. It's like, no, 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 no. no. Not look, and not all shots and all saves are created equal. Just because it happens once doesn't mean it's going to happen every single time for that goaltender. And just because the goaltender misses it that one time doesn't mean he's going to miss it every single time. My whole point is. You, you can't look at that shot and go, that's an expected save. You can't yeah. expect. That the goaltender is going to stop that. In the same way that you wouldn't expect that the guy shooting it is necessarily going to score, it's it's kind of one of those like they're dueling, right? But it's it's not like every single time it should be saved just because you know he's kind of in the right spot or he's supposed to be anticipating it or whatever else, right? right. So um, I don't know. I think people are a little too black and white when it comes to what should be a save and what shouldn't be a save, and that's where a lot of the you know soft goals uh, commentary comes from. You know, oh, it was soft. It's like, well, was it really? I mean, really, was it like a soft goal? And so, some of the ones they call soft. I'm not saying yeah. that one was. No, or that people are saying that it was. Yeah. But it's, you know, that, that's where a lot of the commentary comes from. And people say, you know, oh, it shouldn't, shouldn't have gone in. Well, 
I think your your expectations of what a goaltender is capable of doing, any goaltender is is maybe a little bit off. But yeah, anyway. So something but, else that's been different, di- different, different in the last different? six games. Okay. Shemek has been back. Yes. So a couple people asked, uh, <laughs> do you think Redding Shemek impacted and boosted the Sharks' decor? Yeah. Is Shemek the saver? Okay. So, Shemek is not the savior. He's not the guy that you put out there. Um, no, he's the redeemer. He is. Yeah, he's the redeemer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he he's not like. You know that missing piece that is the the guy who steps up and does it all, right? He's not the he's so. not that he's the, like Vlasic is that for on the defensive side for me. Vlasic is that, right? Well, I think what Shimmick brings is the ability to play alongside Brent Burns comfortably, allowing Vlasic to play alongside uh, Eric Carlson, right? I think when you have that dynamic where you can have that player step in and take that role. Other people don't have to shift around and play where they're maybe not really supposed to be playing. Right. And I think that's what he brings. He brings that steady presence alongside Burns so that the rest of the defense can get itself sorted out. Now, don't get me wrong. Shimmick is is an awesome defenseman. I like. We keep hearing about his reads. His reads are really well good. You know. So, um, I mean, Burns. He said that last season. <laughs> Logan's saying it this season. Uh, at least in the post game interviews. And you know it's funny because you see him in the offensive zone. He he unloads the puck in the offensive zone as well. Right? So he's he's all over the place, yeah. and I love it. And the best thing I've heard about him was, um, you know, he plays a physical game, and it's not forced. That's part of his game, right? As opposed to like we said last time, if you asked Tim Heed to step up and be physical, people are probably going to chuckle. So um, you know that's what he brings. He brings that presence that plays solid defensively alongside Brent Burns and allows the rest of the defense to do their thing. And that's I think why. You're seeing the defense playing so much better right now. It's not because Shimmick by himself is just that great of a defenseman. It's that he's allowing the other pieces of the puzzle to fall into the right spots. Accurate? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, the pairings are more solidified with him in the lineup than without. So speaking of pairings, we got a couple questions about pairings. Uh, Matt Lowe asks: Seems like the forward lines are based off are, are based off pairing combos. What are your thoughts on the Hurdle Meyer or Couture Kane pairings? That's you know, yeah. we talked about that in the beginning of the season. The right wingers are just kind of weak, and we thought that they're going to be bouncing around in the lineup, moving up and down, which is what we're seeing. I mean, Goudreau is now on the line with Couture and Kane, and actually looks pretty good. He's he's there was just an uh, article from Kevin Kurz in the Athletic about it, about him specifically, Goudreau, mm-hmm. um, and he's he looks great. Like he looks like he belongs. He he work, he's one of the guys that worked out in the summer uh, knowing that there's going to be some open spots and that they're going to need him to be up and down the lineup. So uh, kudos to him to really kind of take another step forward, I guess, in his career and get some more ice time. He has Pete DeBoer's full trust, and he works his tail off every night. So, But, yeah, we kind of talked about how it's, it's less about yeah. full lines and more about pairings mm-hmm. where you usually see it's Hurdle and Kane, uh, Couture and mm-hmm. Meyer. Although Myers can be kind of bouncing around a little bit, even Thornton and Sorensen, you've seen stick together more or less. Yeah. yeah. So they, that that's kind of we kind of had talked about that beforehand, but um, I, I a lot of teams do that. It's not yeah. really specific to the Sharks. There's a lot of other teams that do this exact same thing. Um, you just get it helps with chemistry because you at least have two guys that are always together and know each other really well, and then that third guy can just be hit or miss based on every night. Like you can change it during the game or. Mm-hmm every other game or whatever you want. And I think, uh, at least on this show, we, we don't make so much like definitive statements all the time. And I think that's, um, I, I mean, I, I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong. And there was one definitive statement that I made. It was Barclay Goodrow is best served on the fourth line. He's maybe a third line fill-in type player, but he doesn't really belong in the top six. And th- and that, that that's more or less a definitive statement. That's me saying this is where he belongs, right? Um, and that, that was just wrong, plain wrong. I mean... His, his traditional role in this team has been there, and we've yeah. only ever seen that. But given the opportunity, I have to say I am extremely impressed with Barclay and him stepping up uh, and taking the reins on that role, and he's, he's been running with it, and he's doing a great job. He's picked up mm-hmm. uh, quite a few goals already. Um, he's, he's got that hard work ethic, and it's great to see a guy that is normally playing in that grinder role um, get the opportunity, get the chance. And not only get the chance, but do something with it. A lot of times, thrive you know, a guy will exactly thrive in it. A lot of times you'll get a guy who gets that opportunity and he kind of blows it and wastes mm-hmm. it. And Barclay is, at this point, he's a veteran now, right, on this team. And uh, I, I just love, I love the story. I love that he's, 
you know, this guy that, I mean, even for me, like, I mean, he, he doesn't belong up there, and he's basically kind of proven us wrong, which is great. I love that. So, um, like you said, though, I think we're revolving door on that right wing side. Um, that helps him kind of stay up in the lineup, too, because, you know, uh, we don't have anybody else that can really jump in there right now. But if need be, he can cycle through mm -hmm. second, third, fourth, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, no, it's great. I'm, I'm really happy with Barclay and, and what he's done so far. So. Does it allow you, like, you can play the hot hand, too, so, like, in case anybody else who's on, like, yeah. a third or fourth line all of a sudden is just points yeah. after points after points. Not, he's not going to stay there all season. Right. Yeah. He, he'll bounce around still. But for this six-game win streak, he's been doing pretty well. Yeah. So speaking of other lines, though, uh, Ryan Hopkins asked, do you guys think the third and fourth lines have been holding their own despite not showing up on the score sheet? Yeah, I think the Thornton line, especially against the Edmonton game, that really <laughs> stuck out as uh, yeah. a mismatch, really, because Edmonton, Edmonton, the leading team right now in the Pacific Division for now. You mean the leading line? No, Well, yeah, but <laughs> yes. case in point right there, like they're a one-line team, so... They just don't have the depth. Um, maybe kind of two lines. Nugent Hopkins kind of does a decent job on the second line, but um, not nearly the scoring as the first line from right. Dreisaitl and, and McDavid. But uh, The Sharks, I mean, they showed you, you shut down that top line. The Edmonton Oilers are, are kind of still kind of weak. So um, I, I think uh, that, that line, especially the Thornton line in that game, uh, really stuck out. And, I thought they got some points in that game. A lot of a lot of guys, I think, in the Edmonton games, there were six goals. Um, yeah. The scoring was spread out pretty evenly. It wasn't like one line doing all the damage. Mm -hmm. So um, I well, thought they looked good. Didn't Thornton Marlow get a goal in that one? It was like a it was Thornton to Marlow. I thought in that goal, that game. I thought so too. I, th I, I thought yeah, Marlow scored in that game. I probably have yeah. a sheet somewhere. That I'll says have to no. take a look at it again. Yeah. It's been a week, guys. Come on. <laughs> uh, other questions here, yeah. actually. Um, so two here related to Eric Carlson. Start with Black Widow 1902. Okay. What is your opinion on Eric Carlson's article in, Sel uh, I'm guessing that's SB Nation, um, not skating well and being booed? He, will he pick it up? Or there, is, is it a groin injury still an issue? And there's actually Eduardo Gonzalez also says, saw an article stating that EK65 surgery is affecting his skating. Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah. Um, so we don't, I don't really read, I don't know if you do, I don't read, S was it SB Nation? I don't like SB Nation. You, oh, so you know of. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know SB Nation. But that's, uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you call it? Um, anyway, oh I don't read that clearly. Uh, so, um, but it, when yes, thank you for the close up on the stash. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, you know in terms of Eric Carlson and is it the, the uh, I can't think of what it's called. What are you doing? Fear the fin. Fear the fin is SB Nation. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't read right them. Sorry. I think it's Fear the fin. I don't read. But regard. <laughs> nice. Regardless, um, <laughs> Super Producer Jason having some fun. Um, yeah, no, I, I think regardless, uh, you know, is it still uh, a problem, the groin uh, surgery, the, the groin injury, is it uh, affecting him? I think we've seen a few clips through that people had pointed out where, yeah, it looks like there's maybe still something lingering there. And, you know, hey, that's that's okay as long as it's not um, going to affect him down the road, right? If we're not going to agitate it any further. Um, I, I would not at all be surprised that maybe he's still dealing with it. Um, you know, it's... It's not exactly the the easiest thing to recover from, right? So no, and I think it's more to do with he didn't have a full training camp yeah. or a full regular summer of workouts okay. because of the surgery. So kind of related to the surgery, but not that he's in pain and he can't really skate that well. I think he just doesn't probably doesn't have his legs yet. He doesn't. He's not in full season mode, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, maybe <laughs> he slowed down a little bit because of it, but I think I think he's been getting better. I mean, he's not the best yet. We've seen him do some pretty bad I was going to say, I, th I, th yeah. I think it's, it could actually be a mental thing too, because you see him every once in a while have those moves where he accelerates, turns on a dime, makes the pass, and he's playing really, really well, yeah. but they aren't as frequent as I've, I, I mean, yeah. again, I didn't watch Carlson's career, so yeah. I don't know, but it sounds like it's kind of he's, what he's known for is bread and butter, right? Yeah. So it could be you know, like you said, with, with with an injury like that, it's not like you can feel it coming on. It's either there or it's not. Yeah. So it's a mental game of, am I going to do this to myself again? So maybe he doesn't have the full confidence. Well, back. okay, so let's put it this way. Is there something that's keeping Eric Carlson from being Eric Carlson? And I think the answer is yes. Whether that's, you know, stuff at home because he's got his, you know, his new uh, baby at the house now, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's tough, right? So um, that, that could be a part of it. If there is a lingering issue with his groin, that could be a part of it. If it's... He hasn't had you know enough on, on training camp. Why not? That could be a part of it. Um, we've seen him make some passes that are not on tape, uh, not even close sometimes. 
Uh, he's just making some poor decisions. And is that part of some of the other things that are going? Yeah, probably. The only person who's going to be able to answer that question for you is Eric Carlson himself. Um, and he's not going to answer it for you. So, um, I mean, everything that, that we say and everything that's there is gonna, all going to be speculation anyway. But, um, you know, any, any, any of those things could be a factor for sure. But do I think that there is something <laughs> that's keeping him from being 100% Eric Carlson? Yes, because I don't think this is 100% Eric Carlson. No. This, to me, is not him. This isn't him. No, right? I think it's still coming, though. And that's the thing I've been saying about the Sharks when they were on their losing skid was this is the thing that's promising is that they are this bad right now. It's not that this is their, their baseline. This isn't the fault. This isn't what they're known for. They're known yeah. for being better than this, which means they're down here right now. So same thing for Eric Carlson for me. He's known for being up here. Right now he's kind of not so hot, which is funny because if you look at it, how many points does he have? He's almost point per game. Right, for a guy who's dealing with whatever it is he's dealing with and sucks, apparently, he's he's putting up points still uh, at a pretty good pace. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, is there, again, is there something points. that's bothering him? Probably. Uh, I don't know what it is, obviously. But, um, I mean, again, for, for a guy who's got something that he can improve still, I mean, he's still gotten, getting points, racking up the points. So, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think his play could be better defensively, obviously. I think he could be making better passes, obviously. But... Uh, I'm, I'm so far. I'm I'm fairly happy with this play. Like to me, you go back to the Pretenders episode last mm-hmm. week, right? I think there's look at the Oilers. The Oilers are playing to their potential right now, leading the division. This is the best they're going to be. Yeah. The Sharks are exactly. not the best they're going to be. They're only getting better. Yeah. And they're catching them, and they beat them. They beat them pretty handily. Handily. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not. I, that's why I'm not so worried about the Sharks. If if they were playing the best that they can play, and they're still losing because the other teams were so much better, then I'd be worried. But right. they haven't been. So that's why I'm always like, they're still going to be yeah. in the playoffs. When you're losing games because you're beating yourself because you're not playing up to your yeah. potential, there's a ceiling that you can still hit. The Edmonton Oilers are, are playing at their ceiling right now is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so switching from one D to another, uh, does Dylan get traded since Ferraro is doing well? Montreal has been scouting the Sharks, and he's on the list, Are he, and he's on his last year. Talk about that, but also talk about general Ferraro gameplay. Is he still as <coughs> good? Because he was playing really well at the beginning of the year. Yeah, is he still up to where he was? It is. It's interesting because he's not playing right D, and he's a left-handed shot, which I, I can't remember the last time the Sharks really did that for a top six yeah. guy, right? Or yeah. a top six pairing. So uh, I think he's still playing well. I think he he has good reads, kind of like Shimmick. Uh, he throws some good hits. He is quick. That surprised me. Good. Not the skating. What you said before, though, the hits. Yeah. That surprised me. Yeah. Out of uh, out of a rookie guy who's more known for his offensive prowess. I mean, like, they're not like it's not like uh, crankshaft hits, but they're they're mm, pretty yeah. good. Like they're for a rookie, especially, yeah. right? Yeah. Makes good reads, which is not easy to do when you're going for a hit. Like right. you have to be able to to know where you're, you're well, going to be. Especially right. for a guy coming out straight out of college yeah. to make reads at NHL speed. Yep. Um, I, I see him, by the way. I'm I see, impressed. I see that kid working uh, in practices. Yeah. He puts in work. Yeah. Like, big time work. On what? On skating? his skating. His yeah. skating. He just keeps going, keeps going. And, like, there's, uh, when he was sitting out, um, he stay on the ice after practice with coaches. And, I mean, you see other guys out there working hard, don't get me wrong, but this kid... I mean, he just wouldn't stop. He just kept going over. And he's, like, bent over, and he's huffing and puffing. And he's like, okay, one more. And he goes, and he just does the whole thing again. The kid's got strong, strong work ethic, really strong work ethic, and that's going to take him uh, wherever he wants to go in this Mm -hmm. league. So really, really happy with Ferraro, yeah. On the topic of Brendan Dillon, though, um, yes, he's on his last year, but the Sharks will be a playoff team. So it doesn't really make sense to me to unload him just because he's got one year left. Um, that's the kind of guy that you want to keep when you're going into playoffs, right? Because he's been with your team uh, throughout the season, knows the system, you're not changing anything up on it, and he hasn't been a liability. Um, If the Sharks were not going to be a playoff team, absolutely trade him away. Uh, That makes the most sense. But since I think that they're going, they are playoff bound, this doesn't make sense to me to trade uh, Brendan Dillon away. So I I don't see that happening. Anyway. Uh, I'm gonna jo- actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut in line here. Yeah. Uh, Alec Hagwood, I hopefully pronounced that correctly, $5 in Super Chat. Oh, hey, is thank you. Bank doing better as of late, or is the, stick, uh, is the six shootout goal clouding my vision? I think he's, I think he's doing better. Who? I mean, LeBanc. LeBanc. Oh. I think, I think he's playing better. Um, he was not playing so well two weeks ago. Yeah. He also like, he got the first goal streak. against uh, the Red Wings, too. So. He... Offensively, he doesn't have any problems. It's his defensive and work ethic 
on the defensive end is what is his problem. Like we saw a month ago, he coasted towards that one guy, Controller right? Controller disconnect. Just ridiculous. <laughs> like, come on. I don't care if your legs are going to, if you're going to fall yeah. because they're so tired. You you pump your legs. I mean, do what Burns does. Move. Get tired and just dive in front of it. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Superman. It. It, really, your choices are, you know, your legs are already burning. Burn them up the rest of the way trying to get back or end up riding the pine because you weren't, uh, you know, chugging your legs. Um, I don't know how he didn't ride the pine, to be honest. Yeah. He was maybe in the doghouse for a little bit there, but... You know, I did notice a couple a couple plays on the defensive end yeah. that he made where he back-checked and he, and he picked a guy's pocket, I think. Like, nice. he just... It, he did. He's been getting better. Yeah, I think he's been playing better. And it's again, it's not about his offensive because his offensive stuff is is really good. I mean, look at that ridiculous pass that he made to Carlson's goal. Did you see on the power play? I, it's funny because you look at that and you go, <laughs> a month ago that pass gets picked off Maybe. and goes back the other way shorthanded. Maybe, but you know what? I've seen him do that pass a million times now. It's usually off the boards to Burns at the, the at the corner. The thing is, it like makes him so good is he sells out the shot yes. so much that he deceives... He basically takes whatever the other team gives him. Yes. So he, he can shoot. Yeah. He has a great shot. He can pass across or pass back like he yes. did. Like he has so many options, and he really gets that power play going. Yeah. And um, I, that's why I think he's so good is, is there's no one else really that can do that on the team right now. That's what I was going to... Real quick, I was going to say, a month ago, I think he would have taken the shot. Like, maybe he wouldn't be as confident in that pass. But I don't know. Because I've seen him, like, the same exact play. Which is where I, I'm like, okay, now, if you can if you can play one way and get yeah. the goalie to be like, no, he's going to take this shot, that's who Kevin LeBanc is. And then all of a sudden the shot's coming from, you know, 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. Watch watch every clip of every power play the Sharks have where they have the puck in the zone and LeBanc's got the puck. And I guarantee you, you will see at least one pass from Kevin LeBanc no, I, on his backhand I understand. back to the point. Now, is it a phenomenal pass? Yes, absolutely. Did I look at that Just and go, he's passing that to Carlson? Yes, straight, absolutely. Straight back or like 270 degrees like he did? <laughs> Where he was basically like, Hoot! It was know? behind him, wasn't it? Yeah, it no, was... he, he went, he, he turns his, his shoulders so that his backhand yeah. is more aiming towards the center uh, than it is towards boards. But it's but deceiving it's, yeah. to the other Oh, team. no, it's totally it's really deceiving, yeah, defense. it really is. I have to say this then. It's spot, Steve Spot. You got to give him a little bit of props here because that's yeah. not something that Kevin LeBanc just does on his own. That's something that they do work on. They set up. And how many people wanted Steve Spot exactly head in the first what two weeks of the season because exactly. the power play wasn't going. Over yep. thirteen, and then one so of the, the Sharks are now one of the just, better for a stretch. Yeah, just look. They're what did I say? 12? Twenty something percent. But they're twelfth in the league yeah. uh, for their power play percentage. Yeah. And in the beginning, they were in the bottom third. They were easily. at zero percent. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they went they for a long time yeah. without a goal. Yeah. So um, real quick, actually, um, I do want to get back to Angela Nunes. Okay. <clears throat> but um, the penalty on Burns in the overtime last night, he got the puck. I mean, like he dove and got the puck, yeah. and then there was the trip. So that's why it was a non-penalty uh, shot. Correct. But if you get the puck in general first, like, is there any sort of, like, I was confused because it was like, I wait, was confused too. It was a trip. <clears throat> I mean, it definitely was a trip, but I was like, if you're going for the puck and you hit the puck, isn't it not a trip? He hit, I, he hit the puck barely right before he took out his skates. Yeah, but that's the, as long as you touch the puck. Now again, maybe this is different, or maybe I don't understand the ruling. But I thought that as long as you hit the puck first, it didn't matter that you tripped the guy. I, I could be wrong. Obviously, I must be wrong because that's that's so not what happened. So if I check the puck away and then sweep your legs out, that's fine. Okay, in NHL in twenty, same, no, in, no, no, no. But is it, <laughs> and this is Aaron. This is where my question comes from. Yeah, if you poke the check the puck and then you reverse your stick and like sweep the leg. Trip. That's if, a trip. If, if it's a, like on the follow through of a slap shot, you hit a dude in the yeah. face. It's not a high stick. Correct. Right? So he sweeps his stick and gets puck, and in the same motion gets a gets a skate. He still tripped him. But he even Burns is arguing that to the ref, so that must be part of the ruling. If somebody now, can if take he, a look at the ruling, maybe and, and get put that in the chat so that Joe can read it back if he to us. Pokes and hits him at the same time. That's not a penalty. No, it's not. That's I'm. It yeah. wouldn't have been a penalty if you were like if he was next to the guy and he just checked him. Yeah. Poked it. You don't have to. Check, but you don't have to touch the puck to check. I'm him. just saying. Just, yeah. I'm just saying that it wasn't a penalty. Whereas he pokes the check. He pokes the puck away yeah. and then trips him. Yeah. It's a tripping penalty. It's that's, not a penalty shot. That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking for. I'm asking. I'm asking them to give me where I'm, the ruling is because I I remember some hearing somewhere that be well before this. If it hits the puck and then trips him, that it's not a tripping penalty because he was, he was going after the puck. 
What? I think they talked about it. Yeah. No, no, I think I, I, that's why I'm asking for either Joe or somebody to give us the right. ruling. So. Well, someone will hopefully look that up. Yeah. Because, again, I thought maybe if you guys knew, you could tell me because I was confused. But that's why it. I was confused because that's how I understood the rule. Right. Even if, it, yes, it's tripping, but if he doesn't hit the puck and he hits the skates, oh, tripping. If he does hit the puck, but it hits the skates in the follow through, then it's not tripping. That was my understanding of it. Yeah. So. Either way, they killed it off. Which but is yeah, it was but. it was really strange because um, again, again, you see Burns arguing the point right at the bench. So, so there must have been some confusion. Yeah, obviously so. he's got something to say about it. So so question. Anyway, uh, going back to uh, the chat here, uh, Angelo Nunez, uh, what's up with Meyer being so snake bitten? <laughs> it's a goal scorer. That he's not going to score eighty two yeah. games, yeah. eighty two goals. So he's going to go hot and cold streaks, just like every other goal scorer that has and never been. been. <laughs> Except for those most elite guys like Ovechkin, yeah. man. That's what makes them so special. Yeah. Yeah. They get 50, 40, 50 goals a year. They're not having, they're not as streaky. So, see, and even then, you, you get those people that are going, you know, Ovechkin didn't score last night. What's wrong? It's like, well, because he's not going to score every single night, right? right. It's going to be like one, bout, uh, one every two. And even then, <laughs> he gets a, a hat trick. That's three other games that he probably won't put a goal in, right? Exactly. He didn't get a hat trick so, right now. What's worth Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's yeah, is he a streaky scorer? I don't know if he's even a streaky scorer. I think all scorers score in streaks. Any, anybody who puts the puck in the net, right. they don't do it that consistently. It, it's about one every, like, three games or so, right? Or they'll go five games in a row with a goal and then six games without it. Yeah, it's just, it just kind of... Right. Yeah, I mean, for, for a long time, Kane was the goal leader, and now the hurdle almost caught him at this point. And Kane, I think, went through a stretch where he wasn't scoring in the beginning of the season, right? Or not, no, I guess well, he's no. He's no, been pretty he's, he's consistently. Got nine, nine of his twelve goals yeah. are are power play. Sorry. Seven or power, no, actually seven or power play. Oh, okay. Two are penalty kill. It he's was two Hurdle, like Hurdle and Meyer were the two that were not scoring in the beginning of the season. We well, talked yeah. about that. Yeah. Special well, teams in general right and, now. And how about is is Couture feeling right now? Oh my god. Well, and he, I would say he is snake bitten because he yeah. has some really good opportunities, and it's like bar. Or perfect save, or, or, or Kane, Kane skates it in, <laughs> <laughs> or, or yeah, it, hit, it bounces off somebody else. And yeah. Goes in. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, I, even even the last game, I'm I think. not I'm not worried about it. He's gonna be a 25 to 30 goal scorer. Yeah. He's not gonna be a 50 goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, at least not yet. Not this year. Maybe in another year or two. Yeah, we'll and 25 see. 30 is if he catches back onto like a pace that he would normally right. be on because he's already burned 21 games, right? Uh, he's got what was he got? One goal, two goals. Wait, you're talking about Couture? I thought you were talking about Meyer. No, Couture. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well, Couture. Okay. I was talking about Meyer. Okay. But Couture, he's he's at two right now. Do you know, Joe? Th uh, Couture, many? I think he's got three. Three? Oh. Couture yeah. has three. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, I mean. We have two replies, by the way, to my confusion, and oh. it just confuses me more. Okay. Um, Mad Cow Jr. says, A player shall not place a stick, knee, foot, arm in such a manner that causes opponent to trip or fall. Yeah. Accidental trips which occur simultaneously with a completed play will not be penalized. Mr. Chango replies right afterwards with, when a player dives to make a poke check and hits the puck first and the follow-through trips the player, then it will not be called a trip. There you go. That's rule 104B in the NHL rulebook. And that's what Burns is arguing is that rule. I doubt he called it out by name, but he was like, no, that's not true. He's <laughs> yeah. like, 104B, what? No, he uh, wasn't. He was saying some choice words. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I think that's what Burns was arguing was, was that. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. All right. Moving well, right along. <clears throat> moving right along. Well, uh, Eduardo Gonzalez, would you rather have Radil or Gregor on the fourth, floor, fourth, fourth line and Angelo Nunez, who do you see as the strongest fourth line pivot? Doesn't matter. It's fourth line. It's all right. It, it may not matter, but the question is, I'm who, who's the strongest? You know, I'm, who do you I'm, think is I'm the strongest behind. one? I'm trying to catch it. I'm before the super chat. Who do you think is? It may not matter because it's the fourth um, line. But well, DeBoer doesn't really like Radiel, so Gregor. Just because of the coach. <laughs> there you go. I like Gregor. I think he's got more uh, offensive upside, and I think he sure. works. He, I think he works a little bit harder than Radil does. Mm -hmm. uh, Radil's got size, but other than that, I haven't really been impressed by Radil. So there you go on that one. Uh, Joe's, Joe's over here doing this, by the I'm, way. I'm now I'm trying to catch up because I'm I'm far behind. It's at this not point. that easy, is it? <laughs> no, well, no, not when you guys talk for like 20 minutes. Get on with what it. What are we it's supposed to like do? It's show it's or like something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we'll sit here and not talk for 20 minutes. I'll just read. I'll just read the rest of the comments. Uh, no, he goes. Uh, <laughs> well uh, done. Real quick, uh, Jones hasn't let in a shootout goal, which is pretty cool. I mean, like, 
Yeah. Impressive uh, if it was even just, you know, a total of, uh, you know, six for six saves, but he is uh, 10. 10 for 10. Yeah. So. Um, somebody asked here, where did it go? Ah, it's disappeared. By the way, key um, saves at key moments. Key saves, key moments. Just throwing that out there. <clears throat> Super Chiro, EK65 for Kale McCarr, straight up. Would you do it? Why or why not? No. <laughs> no, Paul, I was kidding about the talking thing. You can talk. Go no, ahead. the... the uh, no. No. Not straight up? What would, what would it take? No, 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 no. How do I get but, you this car tonight, Paul? I'll say no, but... <laughs> no, but... Um, man, it would be really nice to have a really young, solid defenseman like that in your system, um, even if it means not having Eric Carlson. I, I'm not saying I would make the trade, and I wouldn't. But if you are to tell me... Um, you know, Eric Carlson's no longer part of the team, but Kale McCarr is, I'd still be happy. I'd be okay with it. I'd be okay having him because um, I mean, he's a straight-up stud, that kid. We already have someone in the pipeline like that. Yeah, but I don't know if he's going to make it. I think he will. He's still very young. That's that, I, I 100%. 100%. percent. How old is Kale young. McCarr? Uh, how old is he? He's out of college, so 22? 20 20 something. 20, I'd how old is Ferraro? 22? He played alongside Ferraro, so. 22. Okay, there you go. So... How old's Merkley? 19. 19. Yeah. Give him another three years. I, no problem. I'm just saying, Kel like, McCarr he will is be currently there. playing in the NHL. I just think Kel Merkley will be there in three years. Kel McCarr's 21. No, and that's great. He or might. Two years. He might whatever. be there. Was Mirko Miller there? He was nothing like that. I'm just saying. Uh, you never know until they're there. Okay. That's all I'm saying. So if you take... We talked about this on the show. Take I'm, the going, guarantee. I'm going to the question, would you trade Carlson for yes. McCart? No, I would not. But you're talking about Merkley now. Because we have Merkley in the system. If we did okay. have Merkley in the system, then I would be more apt for it. Okay. You're covering your mic. Somehow. I'm not. I don't know. It's... It, it, yeah. <laughs> it's, you, it's, it's being crushed in between your packs. <laughs> so then, wait. <laughs> so then, do we need Eric Carlson? We already have Burns. We have Merkley in the system. Yes. Okay, just checking. All right. Speaking of other defensemen again, Jack Frost <laughs> says Ferraro has been killing it. Does he go down to the AHL, or do they keep him where he is in the NHL? I remember you making a comment saying Ferraro better be careful. He's going to play his way onto the team. Yeah. Because he's got there. a two-way still right now, right? No, so... It, How does it work? He does have a two-way. Ferraro does. Yes. He, he's he's going to end up staying with the Sharks, I think. The Sharks are on a six-game winning streak. Why he's, would they drop him down? And like you said, he's been playing right D. Right. Better they better than they, the right-handed exactly. options. That they, they like have. him playing it right. I like him yeah. playing it right D more than Heed. I don't care where he plays. I like him playing. You Who's know the what other I mean? right-hander? Prout. Prout. Heed and Prout. And he's hurt again. Is he hurt again? Yeah, he got another concussion. Oh God! Because he got in a fight in his first game back. <laughs> he's out again. I didn't realize it was a. It was. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Hey, I have a concussion. Oh, I just recovered. I'm gonna come back and fight. <laughs> Was it? Was it? Yeah, I don't remember why he. Why? Well, I, because he's proud. Uh, good reason. All right, that sucks. But okay, I I did not realize that. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll take Ferraro over <clears throat> Heed or or proud, proud, a healthy proud. I'll take Ferraro over either of those. Go ahead. A uh, a a name we haven't heard in a while, and I know you guys miss so. Uh, Mad Cow Jr., should the Sharks trade someone for Chris Tierney, I'd like to see him back in Teal. <laughs> uh, who, though? That's the problem, right? I would love to have Chris is Tierney. He, wait, is he a right wing? Put him where? He doesn't fit on the team anymore. Yeah. That's the problem. He's not going to be a third-line center. Yeah. Then put Joe on the fourth line? No, it's not happening. He's used to getting top-line minutes, buddy. <laughs> yeah, because there's nothing else in Ottawa right now. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm a number one center now, guys. This is Chris Tierney. He should be a number two, not a number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I could see him being, like, t like we always said, 2-3, right? Yeah. I could see him yeah. playing 2-3. Anyway. Uh, Ryan Hopkins asks, who from the Barracuda do y'all think could slot naturally into the fourth line with Gambrell? So much fourth line talk to Mad me. Cow Jr. says Bergman. <sighs> I've seen I like Bergman. Bergman. I like Bergman. I'm not overly impressed by Bergman. I wouldn't mind seeing True. That's one guy I wouldn't mind seeing get a shot at the NHL. He's big in his skill. He's a big dude. He's basically Radil with skills. He led the team last year. Barracuda, right? Yeah. In scoring. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I believe he did. I, I didn't watch the Barracuda that closely. Um, 
but yeah, I would love to see True. He's he's a big dude. Yeah. And and, and again, he's got skills to back it up. So um, I would love to see him get a shot. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if he got a shot. Um, I think he deserves it. You know, give him a call up. Maybe maybe he takes an injury or something like that, and we don't want injuries to happen, obviously. But maybe that's what it takes. I don't know. But I wouldn't mind seeing him uh, get called up. I want whoever's going to work hard on that fourth line. You know what? He's those, on the he's on the Barracuda right now. I'd call Gregor back up for those eight minutes. Yeah. they're going to play a night. Yeah, I want to see them bust their tail off. Absolutely, true or or Gregor again. I'm happy with Gregor. He's good. Anyway, uh, well, and Super Super Chiro says, why is Peter Borg giving Radil so many chances? Aren't Gregor or Bergman outperforming? Well, <laughs> what's better to is it better to give? Greg Orr, who may have potential to be more than a fourth line guy, more minutes at the AHL level, then Radil, who's not going to be much better than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to mess up their trajectory of their career, kind of thing. I don't know. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because again, it's look how many minutes they're getting tonight. I'm, I'm honestly not sure why um, why Radil is getting so many chances. Size. Though. I mean, that's got to be injuries it. and size. Yeah, it's got injuries to other guys. I mean, I mean, is he? Uh, what's his contract? Right? Is he I have to clear through it. waivers? Oh, probably. Yeah, it's yeah. Probably one way. Redeal, you mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he would have to clear waivers. But I, the way he's been playing, I don't, I don't understand why they're even worried about that. But whatever. Uh, some show notes, real quick. Jake Norwinski wants to know where's the toaster. Hmm. Ah. And we also, fantastic one. dusters, by the way. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yes, we're uh, doing this ridiculous. There, there is a reason for this. Yeah, yeah. Fire away. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you got it. You, got right. it. It's, you did the team. So. We're raising money for, for Movember. So we're doing this as a fundraiser. Uh, there you go. Moteam.co slash the fin factor. There, I can read it. <laughs> the <laughs> dash <laughs> fin dash factor. Yeah, yeah, the, so. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please go there if you would like to donate towards our cause. Uh, I know I set my limit or my goal to 500 bucks. I don't okay. think you set one. I did not set anything. I did it last season, and uh, You're on this season team. I'm just part of the team. Yeah, Joe's on there too. So the three of us. Can have we get Joe to show off his stash? <laughs> I will. Can, right, we, can you do it? Hat on just in case you're yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Here, Joe's going to come on. on you got to warn him because if we didn't warn him when Patrick Cabral was going to walk off. <laughs> here it comes. Here it comes. There it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a picture so good. if you go to that's if you so go good. to our site there's oh, yeah. a picture of the three of us that's right so you can get an even better look yeah. at it yeah, uh, of all of them ryan disgusting. hopkins wants you guys to know for 4.99 in the super chat oh. that fin factor still making bodies tingle <laughs> thank you what so if, much it's been a while since we've heard that actually huh yeah that was very popular during uh during playoffs it was yeah. playoffs every, every night. single time every couple playoffs. minutes really yeah. <clears throat> all right so questions about dell here um, Thank you for that, by the way. Go so ahead. I think Jones has now started six games in a yes. row. Uh, Angelo Nunez wants to know: just has Dell become a liability? Which <laughs> I don't. I mean, like you can't be a liability if you're not really playing. But do you think Dell will be in goal on Tuesday versus Edmonton? No. I yeah, don't I don't think so. Next week they're playing every other game, every other day. Mm -hmm. So there's no back-to-backs, and the Sharks are rolling with Jones. Somebody made the comment. If you can't trust your backup against one of the worst teams in the league in Detroit, when can you trust them? I thought they were actually going to put him in against the Anaheim game. Because it was on the road, give Jones yeah. a little break. Anaheim's not that strong. Mm -hmm. I think Detroit's a little... I think Detroit looked better than Anaheim did. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think Detroit's that bottom of a bottom feeder team. Okay. I think they're a little bit better. Okay. Not like the Kings or throwing your back up against the Kings and losing like Vegas did the other night. <laughs> I want to see. I need to look that up again <laughs> to see if the backup goalie has gotten a win yet for yeah. Vegas. Because I have a feeling it's still a big fat zero. I don't think so. I think Toronto's backup is over six as well. Or something Toronto like is also a team that is not looking good. They're as sliding late. bad right now. Really bad. They're. I think the Sharks are either the same record as them or very close. Which is bad, you know. Toronto but has a big really bad. I was like, but, yeah. but look at it, and Toronto started up, and we started yep, yep. down. Again, where, what would you? La what would you? I would rather, rather trend the right direction. Would you rather win the last yeah. games or lose the last six yeah. games and have the identical record? What have you done for me lately? Right. I mean, that's that's what this league winning is like. cures all, especially a six-game winning streak. <laughs> um, 
Jake Nerwinski asks, can anyone else think that Banker's shootout goal was reminiscent of Pavelski's go-to move? Yes. Swing wide, slow down, shoot. He I, hit the brakes, but he pumped first, if you notice that. Yeah. He hit, he hit the brakes, and then he gave a little shoulder, like a little he, pump. He yeah, he tapped his leg a little. Like, you know what I noticed about LeBanc? He always, he's a right-hand shot, always shoots off the right leg. Always shoots off the right leg. So if he's standing on... So his whole leg, body is really, open. He's getting his torque on that stick then. But a lot really of times you'll, you'll see the, the guys on the left leg with the right leg up and they're they're yeah. they're leaning down on it just the same. But he's got his right leg down and he's like opened his whole body up and then he shoots it. It's just it's a it's a little not unorthodox because you see people doing it, but he does it all the time, which is just kind of weird. Um, That's his normal way of shooting. I guess, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of trippy, but yeah, no, absolutely, You're totally reminiscent of Pavelski. Charge in, hit the brakes, and then kind of wait him out a little bit. If you notice, though, Howard was like, <laughs> he bit on the first little move, that little that little fake. He bit, and then all of a sudden, you could see him. Oh no! He was like falling back. He was falling yeah. backwards when, well, after the shot went in, he was on his butt. Which, as a goaltender, you never want to be right. on your butt, right? I you thought want to be if, on your legs. If LeBanc like faked that shot and then did a move, I think he would have fallen. Oh yeah, totally. Like, he would just <laughs> that that just been embarrassing. Oh, timber. Yeah. yeah, no, he. He full on was he he landed on his butt like yeah. uh, on after the shot went in. He's a master of deception, LeBanc. Okay, just look at him on the power play. We were like like that one pass he did to Carlson. Did you guys see that the other day? <laughs> the one, the only the one? one, the only one. Yeah. Um, uh, Ryan Hopkins, what do you all think about the goals trending slash defense situation after the last six W's? Defense looks a lot. Defense looks like it's been better. Vlasic's been a lot better. Uh, you see the two on one? Yeah. Pass it across. He goes, nope. nope. <laughs> Stick that down. Awesome. The, the Sharks actually, uh, they, they, they tweeted that out when they were like, ooh, shout out <laughs> <Yeah>. to us. <laughs> uh, awesome. I think, yeah, the defense looks better. Um, still giving up some mistakes in the back, which they are <laughs> need to clean up. And I think they're getting a little bit better. But uh, I think Jones has been playing better. I think... Uh, the team defense has been getting better. They're getting more help from the forwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually have a quote that I'm going to use from uh, after the Edmonton game from Vlasic. Uh, he was interviewed about kind of the same thing about how the defense, you guys shut down basically McDavid and Dreisaitl for yeah. most of the game. And he said, yeah, we got a lot of help from our forwards, which is a big thing. Which is what we've been talking about the whole time. Defense, not the defensive pairings, but the team defense, right. right? And when they're all working together as a solid unit, making sure that people are getting pushed to the outside, don't get those second chances. Yeah, they tend to play pretty well. So I thought it was funny. There's an article saying that, you know, with how Vlasic goes, that's how the team is going, right? When Vlasic is playing, uh, you know, really well, then, you know, so too does, uh, does do the Channels of the Sharks. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, okay, again, what's been the problem? In my view, what's been the problem? It's been that team defense mentality, right? When the guy whose sole purpose in life is to play solid defensively in, the, in that zone is playing really well, well, yeah, they're probably going to be playing a lot better as a team. So to me, it was no surprise, uh, you know, seeing that when the team starts picking it up defensively that the Sharks are going to be, uh, you know, a much better team. And again, from good defense comes the good offense. Mm -hmm. The last three scores were 6-3, 5-3, 4-3. Joe said we're going to tie the next game. <laughs> just, anyway, um, so yeah, no, but I mean, look, look at the scores: six goals, five goals, four goals. I mean, that's that's pretty solid offensive output, and a lot of it comes from the defense shutting it down as best they can. Now, sure, there was three goals allowed in each of those games, but they were able to turn that solid defensive play into offensive opportunity. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. I'm looking forward to. I'm not looking forward to next game because it'll be three three, according to Joe. <laughs> uh, but that's it's, we know again talked about. Team's trending in the right direction, and the Sharks are doing that right now. So, happy. Got another one? Uh, you guys seen the drama with Kobe in L.A.? Basically, yeah, he he's, got benched, he's, right? well, he's allowed to pra join them in oh. practice, but they're not playing him. I thought you yeah. said Kobe Scratched. in L.A. Kobe. I was like, uh -huh. <laughs> Kobe. Kobe. Okay, got you. Uh, yeah, I saw the drama. Don't care. Uh, it was a stupid would, contract to sign in the first Would you place. want him on your team? Heck no. Would you take him if uh, somebody no. traded... Kept half the salary, then somebody else traded, nope. kept half the salary, and then someone else traded, kept half the salary. Nope. And you he, had him for... Well, for I thought when that contract was signed, it was a very poor match for him uh, and his skills. He's, a, I think he's a good player. Yeah. He's just, he's on a very bad team, and it gets magnified, signing a contract like that, when yeah. you, you're not performing, the team's not performing, they're relying on you, and you just can't do it. So I thought it was 
a mistake in the beginning, and it's proven that hey, I think he still has a whole another year left. Yeah. And I was heard. I heard on the radio. Uh, LeBron was talking about it. How he's owed two million dollar uh, bonus in December, like right around Christmas time. Okay. So they think that he's going to stick around until then to get this bonus, and then he's probably going to bounce and be like, "Peace, I'm going to Russia." Probably yeah. going back. Yeah. KHL or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody mentioned that. Mm-hmm. So he'll probably stick around until New Year's, and then he's going to go. So what's I, Explain if you can. What's the logic behind telling him I'm not playing you? It's you're, Tom you're McClellan. Benched. He's the coach in the yeah. Kings. Uh, he's so bad that he's just not playing. He's getting scratched. Okay. So he's he's a, bad he's enough a to healthy be scratched. Scratch. In other words. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. It, it'd be like healthy scratching a guy who's making six million dollars on the Sharks. Okay. I've got him at six or seven. I can't remember how much he's he's getting down there, but it's a so lot. It's, it's he's a big being deal. scratched just because he's that bad. It's not like imagine <clears throat> Lucic. Getting scratched. It, well, no, I can. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can, but yeah. he never did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I didn't realize it was just, he's just... It's embarrassing. ...that bad. It's embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Patrick Cabral mentioned this a while ago, but I forgot about it, so I'm just getting back to it. He said he's going to be on EASH, EASHL 20 on oh, cool. Xbox. Yeah. So uh, just saying hi to you guys. By the way, I don't know that he's watching because I think uh, 1030 is his cutoff time for when he needs to go to work, but Nick... Uh, Nick HBK150, I think, is the, the guy that's been jumping on and killing it for the club. Destroying it. Um, he's the only guy with a plus uh, on the team. <laughs> I think there might be one other guy, actually. But uh, anyway, um, played with him the other night. Uh, awesome dude and um, really good job playing defensively. Did you learn anything? anything? I didn't learn that much because I haven't played with them that much. I look forward to learning more. Uh, but he plays as a defenseman primarily. Oh. And so... He scores that many points as a defenseman? Apparently. That's scary. It's yeah, you know, he's pretty solid. So yeah. if only he could Carlson. But it he's up. doing threes, I think is part of it. Only too. threes? So I I am not sure if he's doing many uh, on, on sixes. Okay. For for us sense. at least. That makes yeah. more sense. So but uh yeah, I know he's doing a great job. Uh real quick a note from Illuminato about uh, back to Kovalchuk here. Yeah. Um from what I've heard, he's really just uncoachable. He's really into his own program and doesn't want to even listen to coaches' programs. Okay. And it's like, well... See, that to me makes more sense than he just sucks because you're paying somebody that much money. Yeah. You know, hopefully they kind of get out of their rut or well, whatever. it's going to be like your coach trying to input their system and he just is like, no, I'm not doing that. Exactly. And then, then he's like, okay, no, forget it, you're benched. That I understand. Who There's was it when you guys interviewed last year who was just pretending to not be able to understand English, though? Oh, that was Dan Ruzan asking me telling a story about Urbe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's better to be a... Uh, Popper in a rich man or something. What was it? It's better to be a popper in a rich man's home than a. Yeah, he, that was it. It was just it's better to be a popper in a rich yeah. man's home. <laughs> We've got to talk about how much English this guy doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, and actually, uh, it's it's in that book, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, if these walls could talk. Um, good good read. Um, Dan and. It's behind you. And was it Ross? You pointed to it. I yeah, I pointed to it. Let's see if I knock anything over. You can knock everything over. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh the sticks. Yeah. sticks. The bobbleheads. Okay. There we go. There it is. That's it. <laughs> Awkward pause. Um, by the way, <laughs> to, to, to go back to another comment yeah. here. Oh, um, come on. <laughs> the um, <clears throat> I think it was Angela Nunez, the, the one who like, is Dell a liability? And I, what they, they clarified, I'm like, but will it be that you can't go to Dell, which makes... Jones more tired for playoffs. I, they're going to go back to Dell. It's not going. Yeah. It's not like he's not going to play. Jones isn't going to get sixty-five games in this year, so uh, he'll find his game. I'm not too worried. He's not going to be better than Jones, but he usually gives the team a good chance to win. So I'm not. I think he'll be okay. I said this about last year's play. We were outscoring our problems because you looked at like the the numbers and it was not good for either goalie right. which again kind of shows team defense but we were yeah. when you're scoring a ton of goals that's fine um so now with them actually producing goals maybe if Dell comes back in it's like yeah he lets in one or two or he gets burned on three but we still get a win out of it well you talk about outscoring your problems i don't know that we have the same problem that we did last year right now at least again we've got bob bugner back in and maybe that's a big part of the most recent like surge in defensive capability from this team, right? Maybe maybe his system, maybe his message is starting to resonate with the guys. You know, uh, sometimes it takes you know twenty games or whatever it was. We saw that with Eric Carlson coming in. It took him about that long to get acclimated. Um, you know, maybe now that the, that message 
is kind of making its way through everybody and they're all kind of uh, chipping in and playing that way, right? So I don't know if there's the same problems that we need to outscore. Um, I, I think that the Sharks are, are scoring goals in bunches right now in the last three games or so, mm. uh, mainly because, again, of the solid defensive play that's leading to those offensive breaks. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't think there's uh, anything else I really want to say about it. <laughs> if you got anything no, else to say. I'm, All right, cool. Good, because yeah. i got a question for you. Yeah. Um, Dell for Bobrovsky, what do you think? Oh, no. <laughs> Can't okay. afford it. Let me, let me say this it. about Dell. Let me say this about Dell. So, if we're if we're judging Dell based on the numbers, um, I and I think that that's just as unfair as judging Jones by the numbers. Jones had, I think it was he was still sub nine hundred or on state percentage, and he, uh, during this the six game win streak, I think is what they were saying. It was some stat that they threw out there. So it's like you can't really judge by those numbers, right? So um, I, if we're judging Dell on those numbers as well, I don't think that's fair. I don't think Dell has been bad by any means. I don't think he's been terrible. I think he's come up with some pretty big saves at you know key moments, if you want to call it that. Um, does he let the odd weird one in? Yeah, sure. It's, most goalies do. Um, but you know, a lot of it comes down to how was the team playing in front of him that night too, right? So, I mean, I would like to see a few more um, you know samples, if you will, of games where where Dell's playing and see you know what the the issue is, but. I don't. I, I'm. I'm tending to lean towards again. It's not so much the goaltenders. Um, so I think you know we throw him back in there. I, mean, I would like to see you know what he looks like, you know, and, and what the game, what the outcome is going to be. Obviously, yeah. so I, I think they're playing better in front of both of their goaltenders right now. I think he makes a little too many mental mistakes, Dell. And and to me, goaltending is a big mental game more than anything because skill wise, the goalies are relatively equal. It's all about the mental fortitude and being able to concentrate for a full 60 minutes. Dell, I think, gets stuck trying to do too much, sometimes with the puck behind the net and giving it away, Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, he tries to be... Tries too much. That's probably the best way to say it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. But uh, I think he's a, he's a decent backup. I don't think he'll ever be a starter. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he does... He's not Malcolm Subban. Who's in Vegas in the backup, right? Like where you're, like this is a guaranteed loss practically. Yeah. I don't feel like that with Dell. I feel like with Dell, you're like, okay, we still have a good chance. You got a good chance every night, yeah. Yeah, it's, and that's that's how you should feel about your backup. As but, long as he's not playing, you know, with Jones hurt and and it's him going back to back, even if it's not back to back nights, but back to back games. I mean, that's the problem with Dell. Is like he'll have a good game. Yeah, he'll be great, and then they go to him again the next night or or two nights later, and yeah. just not there. It's mental. It's all yeah. mental. Uh, I have a, a thought experiment, or, or actually it's a question here from okay. Angelo. <clears throat> but I want you guys to give me an over-under. The amount of penalties we get in the upcoming Vegas game. Minutes or penalties? Ooh. You want... Just say minutes. Minutes? Minutes, sure. What do you think? The over-under? Both teams combined? Minutes? No, no. It's, well, their, their question was, um, we get. so We get. All right, let's just do number of penalties. Number of penalties? In Five. Vegas. I was going to say six. Okay. I mean, I feel like the Sharks are a very disciplined team, which is why when you go back to that Bruins game where they hit eight, I was like, how did you get eight penalties in one game? Okay. And you had like one up. opportunity, I think. So the over-under, <clears throat> I said five, Aaron said six, that we set it at five and a half, right? Sure. Ha. <laughs> Will you stop covering the mic? Sorry. He's playing with that. Nasty, <laughs> just sitting here, just going. Mm. Caterpillar. It does like you do kind of want to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so know. thick. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think we just hit the bewitching hour. What the hell was that? Well, I mean, you guys are right on time for. for oh, okay. Losing, for losing your concentration. Nice. So. Oh God, there we go. There it is. Yep. Yeah, I don't even remember what the question. What was the question? The question was how many minutes do you think the Sharks? Yeah, so we take? said over. I said five. He says six. So the set at five and a half. You can use that as your over under. So uh, we would say about five and a half. Then I'm obviously the under. He's the over. Um, I would pay attention to that for the uh, for that game and I'll see where we're at. One line brawl, <laughs> and I win. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Only well, no, one. No, no. There no. could be two line no, no, brawls. No, no, no. no. I, okay, so that you need to have. Yeah, one line brawl, including the goalie. 
including the goalie. One line six. brawl and then no other penalties the rest of the game? Yeah, That's exactly, not going to happen. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So, That's what I'm saying. One line I'm brawl and I'll be over. I'm thinking there's probably two fights and then uh, a few stick infractions, maybe an ejection near I the don't, end. I don't think there'll be any fights. It's not usually any fights. I feel like there's going to be a fight. I feel like enough of it's boiled over now to this point. I hope they're like, you know what? Reeves I Kane hope, forget you. you know? Reeves Kane it. talking back and forth. You know? Yeah. I hope Reeves. I hope Kane scores a hat trick, <laughs> and then just skates by Reeves and blows him a kiss How many as he goes <laughs> by the bench. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that you threw the th- blows him a kiss after that. That was yeah. Ryan Reeves. Boom. Two goals, one assist for three points on the year. Yeah. Good and for uh, you, guys. How many yeah. millions does he make? Two, too many. I, uh, I mean, he's out there for a purpose. He's not scoring goals, right? Yeah, but it's I not just, penalty kill either, though. I can't imagine paying. At least that Melker much Carlson makes going. two million a year it's for to doing own something. Owns Evander Kane, apparently, yeah. right? What? That's, he owns Evander Kane, yeah, so it's to no, own totally him. Does, yeah. Meanwhile, you got Kane at twelve goals and a uh, eight, <clears throat> six assists for eighteen. Nice. Well, so. Logan's got how many assists does Logan have? Logan's in like 12. the teens now. He's up there on <laughs> eighteen assists. Yeah, there it is, eighteen. So, yeah. I mean, you look at his goals. Okay, three, but yeah. he's got twenty-one points in twenty-one games. Is he leading the team in points. Um, yeah, maybe looks. Hurdle was probably. up there. I think he slowed down a little. See, so, look, if you're not gonna, and we heard Jamie Baker say this too, like if you're not gonna be putting the puck in the net, you find the other areas of your game where you can excel. For Jamie, that was defensive zone, uh, face winning offs. faceoffs. Yeah. Uh, and if he lost the faceoff, he said he would go after the guy and hurt him. <laughs> you got <Awesome. clears throat> Hurdle. Yeah. 10 11 for 21. Okay. Logan Couture, 318 for okay. 21. And then Brent Burns, 514 for 19. Okay. Those are your top three. So for for Jamie, that's what he did. I think for Logan, it's yes, playing better defensively, but it's also setting setting up the guys that are able to put the puck on the net right now because he's snake bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see him taking shots. I think he rang one off the crossbar the other game. Um, and he's just, he, he it's frustrating. can't right? find the back of the net right now, but he's getting his chances. The same kind of thing we heard. About Eric Carlson, we said about Eric Carlson last season. He's got a lot of good looks. He's getting his chances. They're getting there. It's just it's just a matter of time before it goes in. That, that goal he had against was it Detroit? Was it the Detroit game or Anaheim game? It was the Detroit where he rang the off the crossbar. No, 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 Carlson. Oh, Carlson's. Yeah, that, I was, that was Detroit. Yeah, that was beautiful, man. That was the that Canada. was. You know who that was from? He got that pass from the bank. Did he put that behind his back? It was like two hundred seventy degree pass That's behind amazing. his back. Amazing. All right, I think we're calling yeah, it. By the way, no, real, real quick, Carlson actually, for, for yeah, he's not getting goals. He's only got two, 16 points in the year, so 14 yeah. assists, yeah. which is tied for second. So Yeah, I have no problem with that. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. So for everybody who's got a problem with Eric Carlson uh, defensively, I feel you, I do. But you know what? He got the contract not because of his defensive prowess. He got the contract because of his output offensively. And he's maybe not leading the team right now, but, I mean, for a guy that's been struggling, according to everybody, um, he's how many did you say again? Fourteen assists. Oh uh, yeah, he's got sixteen points. Yeah, sixteen overall. points, fourteen he assists, twenty-one games. Him better. I, it's not like he's got like three assists and he's done nothing all season. Like he's he's putting them up. Anything else? Uh, no. We're just talking yeah. about who would win in a uh, cage match of Kane versus Reeves. You know the octagon. You know they were just like they're going to skip the game and go straight there. Reeves is fat. He just get tired after a minute. It's true. I can tell you from experience. <laughs> you fought in a cage. No, I'm fat. No, he's fat. Wait a In a cage. Well, thank you guys for sticking around as Welcome long as you did. We didn't expect you to be here still. So uh, thank you for that. And I guess we're going to go and uh, start oh. filming for episode number 65 right yep. now. We're going to have to try to figure out if there are any 65s that have played for San Jose Sharks. I don't think there's any. Not ringing any None, none of any noteworthiness. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Hey guys, thanks again for popping in. Uh, we appreciate it. We love doing the lives with you. It's uh, always fun to sit and chat with our fans and whatnot. And uh, the, for those of you who are able to chip in with super chat money, we do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, do remember though that if you want to give us uh, some monetary uh, uh, help, uh, but you want to get something in return, we do have the store. Get your hats, get your shirts, get your t- uh, your what do you call it? Uh, stickers. Um, I think we made a sale this week. Ooh. There it is. Yeah. So there's uh, uh, the beautiful hat. It's very nice. So um, anyway, yeah. Uh, definitely go to the store, Joe. 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 Yeah, thank you. Uh, definitely go to the store um, and uh, check those out. We uh, we have a fair amount of stock, so we can we can probably have your size. We're good to go. Uh, so yeah, that that's it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, film for episode sixty five. You can also donate to Mo Team. 
dot co there it is. slash the dash fish fish fin the fish dash factor factor the fish it's late factor. I'm tired thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you later this week <laughs> gross hit me come on hit me no come on hit me <laughs> do it <laughs>